Hello, and welcome to the Jim Ruff Show. Today I have a special guest, Nancy Margulis, who I think of as the premier graphic facilitator in the world, and, uh, and I think she is. <laughs> Thank you. And she's also uh, been involved with the inception of the World Cafe uh, and you know how it just right from the beginning. I guess that's what that word means. So, um, and today we're going to talk about the World Cafe and how it relates possibly to the Wisdom Council, how it relates to graphic facilitation, how it relates to dynamic facilitation. I don't know where we're going to go, but uh, Nancy, welcome. Thank you. Great. So maybe you could just tell us briefly what the World Cafe is and what's exciting to you about it. Sure. Um, the World Cafe is a process that gathers a group of people together, uh, ideally a really diverse group of people, and we set up the room so it really feels like you're being welcomed into a cafe. We have music playing, we have uh, someone greeting you, a host or hostess, and people sit at tables of four, and that's the ideal number, so we try to have it set up in that way. Um, everyone in the whole room is invited to participate by exploring the same question at the same time. So it's really important what question we choose to, to bring to the group. As people are talking at their individual tables, we have markers and paper covering the tables, and people are encouraged to draw and doodle and record their ideas as they talk. And after about 15 or 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes at the most, um, everyone is asked to stop that conversation. One person stays at the table, and the others scatter to new tables. So I'll show you on the okay. flip chart, Good. and that way I can, I can also show you this visual recording. So basically, when people come in, they're welcomed. And this is just setting that whole context where people really feel um, that they're in a friendly place. We try to have some music playing as they come in. And uh, we have little candles burning on the tables uh, often, or maybe some little flowers on the table. So it has that kind of atmosphere. Now, the question that we pose for people is one that we've really spent some time thinking about. So to give you an idea, um, when I'm talking to people about our current um, necessary revolution in terms of how we treat the planet, uh, so the topic is going to, in this case, be uh, the health of the planet Earth. And we try to start out with something that's really positive. And so that, in this case, might be, um, what have you noticed that's already happening that gives you hope? For the, the, that we can address climate change. Mm -hmm. So everybody here is talking about things that are very positive, and they're sharing their ideas, and we ask people to listen very deeply to one another, because there may be some new ideas, uh, some new points of view that they hear, and we want them to be sure to catch those. So if you hear somebody you disagree with, that's great, because you might learn something from them. You might mm -hmm. have your mind changed. So this process is going on at the tables. So let, let's, let me get yeah, a little st structure sure. first. So you, you're going to gather a group of people. They're going to work on the environmental crisis, how we're going to transform our society. Uh, some, so it's a group of people that are interested in working on that problem, say. Yes, and it may not be as large as in dynamic facilitation. It probably would be. It could easily be as large as transforming our society. Usually the cafe is a little more focused in terms of um, what can we do locally. It might be, or it might go to a global level. Um, but it isn't always as transformational. Uh, it might be very practical in some cases. Okay. It, might, it might end up in a, in a cafe like this with a list of the things this community can do immediately, locally, to make a difference. Yeah. So, and so you would have, how many people would you be able to gather and work with? Well, we, you want to have at least 12 people, so you can have three tables and okay. enough to move among them. But usually we have more than that. Uh, typically, you might have 100 people in the room. Okay. Um, I've done cafes where we have 2,000 people in the room, and we have tables of four. Cool. And what's nice is it always feels intimate, because even if there's a, thousands of people around you, you're talking to three other people, yes. and you're being heard. There's enough time for you to be heard by those three other people as you take turns in conversation. Okay, and there's tablecloths and candles and, and yeah. the spirit of, of, hey, this is just visiting, we're having fun here. And, and then you talk for a while, and then you rotate to a different table, and, and uh, uh, so you get that spirit of always being in a small group. 
Yeah, and it's, it might be a little bit like you're at a local cafe and some friends come in and sit over there, so you say, excuse me, and you go join some other people. And so, so let's say that there's a break now. We've ex explored one question. Now everybody's going to move. So this person's going to bring their ideas to a new group, and this person's going to bring their ideas. And the question could be the same question, or we could say, let's now look at given what's already giving us hope about our approach to environmental crisis, what do you think is possible that we could be doing, either globally or, or locally? Uh, people explore that question. And then the third question might be, now, what do you feel called to do? Mm -hmm. um, so that in this case, this particular cafe would lead to specific action. Then at the end, we use this visual recording process, and we have a big mural on the wall. And we have a person who's recording and listening and, and writing on the wall. And everyone else is asked to think about what they heard in the cafe that they want the whole group to be aware of. So you're not reporting what you initially thought. You're reporting what you heard or what we discovered. And what happens at the end of the cafe is, invariably, people say, we talked about this, I heard that. They don't say, I think, mm -hmm. I believe, mm -hmm. I told them. You know, it's none of that. It's really, it, it just becomes very much of a collective kind of wisdom that's showing up. And so whatever our collective wisdom is, we want to put that down here with words and pictures. And some of this may be um, specific ideas or plans that one person does have. So they might say, I've decided I want to talk to the local high school about training graduates uh, to put in solar panels. So that might be a very specific I plan to do this. But then we'll ask, well, who else in the room might want to join in this project? So in this case, this particular example, it's really leading to, to very specific outcomes. Mm -hmm. Other times, it's just a question that people are exploring for the sake of learning from each other and becoming collectively more wise about whatever the issue is. Yes. So it's, it brings a collective, it brings action, and it brings a sense of we, in the sense the whole group has talked in this way. But that when we get to the action side of it, there's a, it, it really is happening with individuals and individuals getting together and doing it. It isn't like, hey, we're going to pass a law, or it's not a group decision that we're going to do. Not necessarily, but if the cafe's purpose is to come to a group decision, um, it's a little tricky because we don't, we don't have an outcome in mind. We only know that we want to explore the question. But um, if it is a group of people who may, who may be in a position to pass a law or make a recommendation, then, we, the, then the last question of the cafe might be, what do we want to recommend? Or what recommendation um, has the most heart and energy for you? Mm -hmm. And each person talks and shares. And as those are shared, there's something we call the magic in the middle, mm -hmm. which is that somehow in the center, as we're all listening, there's something collective that emerges. <clears throat> there is the we kind of uh, energy and wisdom uh, that might lead us as a group to take a particular action. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't, we don't try to um, facilitate it in that direction. We just It really has to kind of be an emergent process. Wow, well, you know, because I'm... I'm clicking off this because it seems to me that the piece of making a collective decision, quote, could, I'm imagining dynamic facilitators and maybe the groups being bigger and uh, people rotating. Anyway, I'm just jumping to that because that, yeah. that would add that part to the process, possibly. I, I don't know. So Yeah. Well, I think that's really interesting to ask, you know, how could dynamic facilitation and the World Cafe work together? Hmm. Because what, what you offer uh, does a few things that the World Cafe can't guarantee. So we hope that people will feel really heard because we're encouraging them to be really thoughtful and kind and deeply listen to each other. Mm -hmm. I always say listen to learn, really try to learn. But in dynamic facilitation, you are able to assure people that they feel heard and that their words are written down. So when that's needed, that's really important. And um, if people at a World Cafe table get caught up with a couple of them going back and forth, yes, no, yes, no, there's no one there to facilitate that. Everyone in the, at the table is equally responsible to be sure that everyone's heard, that we keep exploring the issues. You know, But when you really need to be absolutely sure that people move from their positions of A versus B, 
that's when I think the, the World Cafe community and others could really benefit from learning to dynamically facilitate so that a group moves away from uh, yeah. the positions they may be holding so tightly, you know, that are keeping them sort of stuck. Well, that's a marvelous innovation that could, we, we could pursue. It seems really exciting to me to think that way. The other side of it, of course, is in the Wisdom Council process, you and I were talking, um, what, where there's a random selection of people who present to a large audience, and the practitioners have been incorporating the World Cafe so that the presentation happens to a group that are sitting in, four, in tables of four, and then they use dialogue after that point and then rotate and sometimes they have questions but mostly I think they just talk about what the, the Wisdom Council came up with mm -hmm. and you just share what you discovered with the other group and um, I, I watched one of these um, in Austria a couple of weeks ago and, it, and they did a World Cafe, they had the tablecloths, they, the, they didn't have the candles uh -huh. Yeah. But um, that they had the tablecloths and they had the tables all over and the mayor was there and the city council and whatever. And, and then they, um, they just rotated three times and then they just uh, asked people what they felt about now after having talked to people about the, the group conclusions. Yeah, so, so what we're talking about now is that you have an event or a you have a facilitated conversations among a group of people who've been randomly selected and the results of their conversation are brought to the larger community in this yeah, so cafe meet, setting. Yeah, they meet like two days beforehand, or, and then they come and make their presentation to the World Cafe setting. Right. Yeah, so, so I think that's a great use of World Cafe, because at other times, too, like in a conference when you have several presenters giving out information, or you're in a company, they're announcing a new marketing strategy or something, then the World Cafe enables people to turn to each other at their tables and explore a question like, uh, what did you just hear that was new and exciting? Or how, did this new how does this new information impact you? Mm. How can you see yourself applying what we just heard? Ooh, great questions. You yeah. know, so you can imagine, let's say that yeah. the Wisdom Council comes up and has some really great ideas for the community. Um, then the question would be, how does the community take those suggestions and, and really think together about how does this affect us? What's exciting about this? How would we begin to put these into action? You know, so it helps people really thoughtfully incorporate what they just heard. Yes, absolutely. So that's, that's a good use. <laughs> uh, you know, and let me just go back to the idea of marrying these two processes. So there's a possibility that you would have a kind of a cafe and that you'd have tables, but maybe eight to a table with a dynamic facilitator. That facilitator would work with that group of people to enable them to move forward and come up with some new, new thinking, ultimately, some suggestions. Um, so then how would we use the cafe process? Would they then move to new tables and learn, at a, let's say that I go to a new table, and would there be a facilitator there who'd just been working with the other group and maybe a member of that group who would tell me what wisdom that group had come up with. Is yeah, that, it, it's hard for me to imagine actually how that would how work. That work. Okay. Because the, the, the dynamic facilitation process is you, you build this sense of trust in the group and in the small group and, and it takes time to purge people so that they really feel heard and they start to feel tr this sense of uh, vulnerability because they're open mm -hmm. and uh, I think I was thinking too fast to, um, to I'm, I'm realizing now it'd be really hard we'd have to, we'd have some hurdles to get over I think okay to, well so let's say that that, let's say we keep the dynamic facilitation intact the way it is yeah. and we just think about how can that group or that group with their larger community use the cafe to do further exploration so I don't know if this would work or not, but let's say you're staying just with that group. You meet on a Friday night, people have a chance to really express their feelings. You meet on Saturday, people continue to express their feelings, but they begin to move into some new territory and they begin to ultimately agree on some new ideas that, that have come forward. Then perhaps they could, as a whole change of pace, break up into these smaller tables of four 
And each table could take one of these ideas or could take the key idea and explore it together as a small group in terms of how to take it the, to the next step. So um, um, let's say that the group um, recommends a new ordinance that, uh, that uh, is going to require people to uh, use water in a more f efficient way. So then in the small tables, you could then get into some of the nitty-gritty of that. Not, and each table could be exploring it from a different angle with a slightly different question. Or every table could be saying, imagine this has been passed. You know, what are, what are the possible benefits and what are the possible concerns? Or how would, we, how would we share this with people? How would we bring this to the community? I don't know. I can't think of really great questions. Yeah, it's hard. To me, in my mind, the... World Cafe process is really about dialogue, and it's about individual actions, and maybe people linking up with those, um, and individual transformation, individual transformation from and feeling a sense of connection to other people, and and uh, and that. But it, there comes a time when we need to actually, as a whole group, make a decision, you know, or to come up with a plan that what we're going to do as a group. And usually what that me often what people do is what I call the run and jump strategy, where they build the trust, they build the sense of relationship and everything, and they say, okay, now we have to make a decision. Let's hope we can maintain our trust while we, while we make the decision. And we mm -hmm. go through this discussion and voting and whatever. And uh, so it's kind of like a run and jump. Uh, brainstorming's like that. You know, you, you defer judgment, you do this brainstorming, and then you to use judgment where, mm -hmm. so, um, but in dynamic facilitation, we're using a different thinking process. We're, we're trying to, we're e evoking that whole group decision process, but it's not using judgment. Yeah. In fact, we try and stay away from words like agree or disagree or anything like that. So when the group finishes, uh, if, if we're really going to make a group decision, I, I don't see the World Cafe as being the thing to do. Uh, but I think that if the if the Wisdom Council or a randomly selected, I mean, or a dynamically facilitated group came up with a specific proposal, mm -hmm. then the spirit would of that would carry over into the World Cafe setting. Mm -hmm. And I think that what it that that spirit of how I can participate in this and what's my reaction and what, how I'm going to do it would be. That's a beautiful fit, it seems to me. Yeah, yeah, I think it could definitely work that way. And it's also possible that you could start with a cafe as people get to know each other and share some stories and explore some questions together and share what's come out of that and then d dynamically facilitate the group to take it further yes. and to ultimately arrive at where they, they've really come to a... Um, w I, I don't know what language you like to use, an agreement. <laughs> I know, it's of, hard to use. They're of one hard mind. To mess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. However you would yeah, say that. that. It's hard because, yeah, you don't want to go through that agreeing, kind of disagreeing kind of mentality. But, but the, what you're talking about now, I think you've shifted not away from a small group, like a group of 12, to a large community. Like, like if we were to have a community gathering and we wanted the community to make a decision together, mm -hmm. even that word is questionable. We call them, of courses, <laughs> uh -huh. or choices. Um, but we want the community as a whole to make some kind of action together. Or Then, uh, then it does seem to me you bring in maybe a, a World Cafe to introduce, the get people talking maybe, mm -hmm. and then shift into a dynamic facilitated process. And what we've done in the past is we, you know, I would stand up even though there's 80 or 100 people and dynamically facilitate that 80 or 100 for 40 minutes or 45 minutes or something mm -hmm. so that they get their ideas out and we kind of see what the landscape looks like and it's very authentic. And then they go into small groups and uh, we've had dynamic facilitators in, the, in those small groups. We can see, oh, these are the topics. Everybody that wants to talk about that, go there. Uh -huh. And then they come back and make their reporting out, which is... Fun. I mean, people are, they, 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 each small group has this kind of a unanimous perspective, too. And then we try and see how those fit together. And maybe the seeing how those fit together could be a World Cafe format mm -hmm. also. Well, it sounds like we are 
an agreement that you could somehow weave these processes. Yeah. And it would be really interesting to keep exploring how that could happen. Now, if you have 100 people in a room and you're dynamically facilitating them, is there a problem with there being more people wanting to speak than, than you could have time to listen to in, in a given evening? Or? Yeah, you need, I mean, it, it kind of, it needs to be a, a big group and then small groups and a big group and a small group, so, you know, accordion process. Uh -huh. But uh, so, but a lot of times in a big group, if it's a difficult topic, one person will speak and everyone will realize, oh, they've covered that ground, you know. Mm -hmm. and, so and not so. each person has to go over the, a point that's already been made. Right. If I were to plan a, a dynamically facilitated group, a wisdom council, so that I would go back to my home community and I would um, randomly select uh, a number of people and invite them to the wisdom council, and you would come in and facilitate them, what would you tell me would be an ideal number of people for me to gather? Well, we talk about 12. Mm -hmm. My book talks about 24, but the w more we do this, the more we realize we can get away with less. Okay. Um, and if you were to do it, you, you'd probably want a, a convening committee of some group, and you'd want to involve the media somehow, and you'd want to involve elected officials if you could, and you'd want to have it be a series. The Wisdom Council's not just one-time thing. It's really a, a series of randomly selected groups that reach unanimity, and hopefully that each one builds on the last, and the point of which is not what that council says, because they're just gone. They make a speech and they go away, but, but how do we take what that is happening in that small group and have it really be a whole system conversation, where the whole city is really talking. Okay, whole... okay, good. So now I can see how I might... Let me just clarify one thing. When you said some elected officials, do you mean as part of the Wisdom Council no, or as part no. of the convening? As part, well, that would be great if you could get them as part of the convening, but at least get their cooperation so that when you randomly select people and invite them to show up, it would really be nice if the letter went out with somebody besides, you know, our convening committee. It's, I see. It's the mayor and the, the newspaper and, you know, a lot of people that they recognize and they say, oh, yeah, I'd, I'll give up a weekend for that, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So. Okay, good. So then, after the Wisdom Council presents to as many people as we can gather from the yeah. community, that might be a place to do some world cafes where people can get together and explore these Absolutely. ideas with one another, and you could sort of host a series. Absolutely. So, the, yeah, so the, you could do a world cafe in different places, and the Wisdom Council, when they present, they, they, they don't just present, when I wrote the book originally, I, I thought they just would present their conclusions. But what's really turning out to be even more powerful, I mean, the conclusions are really powerful, but what's really neat is when they tell kind of the story of where they started mm. and where their breakthroughs were and where they got to and how, you know, and then they got to this final place where everybody came together. And, and when they share that story and what the conclusions are, the audience feels a part of what happened. Mm -hmm. And so there's this, they could then present that over the cameras, you know, in a video, and then you could have world cafes in different parts of the city, for mm -hmm. instance, and they, everybody could be then in this conversation, this small group conversation, yeah. or lots of people could be anyway. I really like your emphasis on this, telling the story because I've found that, you know, there's something so captivating about telling our stories yeah. and about understanding the history of how we arrived at this, that it's much more powerful if I understand where you started and where your breakthrough was, where the aha, you know, the of course yes. moment was. Yes. Um, and I try to weave that storytelling into cafes often by asking people to begin at their tables with individual stories. Uh, yeah. that sort of sets the tone, they get to know each other better and, 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 and become more engaged. Yeah, that's the secret. We all have an individual story, and in, and also in the presentation, actually, the each person passes the mic. Each person on the wisdom council tells their story also. So mm -hmm. they tells their individual story, like, well, you know, I got this letter in the mail, and I, you know, <laughs> didn't know what to think of it, but I did come, and you know, whatever. They they and usually, more than half of the people say something like this. I didn't really think this was going to be worthwhile, but I did, and I, I'm really glad. And if you get selected, they point right at you. They say, if you get selected, you come. Mm 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're the best voice for getting your next wisdom council. They are. You know, yeah. to, to feel enthusiastic yeah. about being selected. Yeah. But, but it's true too, you and I talked about this, that opening of being authentic you get away from it a little bit and it feels scary. It's like, oh, do I really trust going back into that kind of sp space where you know, I'm authentic and mm -hmm. talking with people? And it's like, even though they had this marvelous experience, you know, we're marveling, uh, we're marveling that they're not coming back and bringing their friends sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, why aren't they? Yeah. So that's something. And, and maybe that's where, the, if the cafe became part of the community that people were used to gathering in conversation that felt safe and intimate yes. and that carried the Wisdom Council themes from council to council during yeah. that space of time between the Wisdom Councils, maybe that would be that, that kind of a space that's great. Um, that would help people feel that's comfortable. That's really cool. Yeah, no, I like that idea. Yeah, if we can get that spirit of, of the World Cafe being an ongoing thing that is happening, mm -hmm. where we're face to face with neighbors and so forth. That would just be, that, that makes all kinds of change easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the World Cafe, the way that it's set up, it's, it's I, I think it might be good to differentiate it from a conversation cafe since Port Townsend has conversation cafes. Yes. So a conversation cafe, a group of people meet and there's kind of a limit to how many can fit around a table and hear each other. Yeah. But they get together and they have a conversation about a topic. And the thing that the World Cafe does um, is to make sure that it's a smaller group at the table, but many, many people can be involved. Yes. And we steer away from a conversation that might become sort of political, um, where people are arguing a bit. Yeah. Uh, instead, because we're all exploring one question to find our wisdom in that answer, um, it tends to have a different kind of feel to it. So. Um, I invite your listeners to, to take advantage of, of exploring either being part of a facilitated, a dynamically facilitated wisdom council or other gathering or a world cafe. Because as you and I know, it, it, it invites us into a different way of honoring each other and, and learning yes. and then sort of becoming collectively more wise. Yes. Well, Nancy, I got the signal that we need to quit. But thank you for bringing that beautiful My summary. Pleasure. Nancy and Margulis, thank you very much. Thanks.